Hi everyone, my name is Carly Bell and welcome to my craft room. Um, I usually like to do a live tutorials uh, that we call Sip and Stitch where we do a project from start to finish. But unfortunately my internet is not working well so I decided to turn off the live and just record it on my computer and then I'll upload it to YouTube so that you can see a nice clear video. But it's going to be just like a live because there's going to be no editing because that is how my life is. We don't have time to edit things. <laughs> so tonight's project I am really excited about. It is a sweatshirt or sweater that I think is going to make great holiday presents for your uh, friends and family members. And there's a lots of different ways that we can personalize this and customize it. But what I'm going to be making tonight is actually a sweater for my mom, which my girls call Mimi. That is her grandma name is Mimi. Um, and so we're going to stitch Mimi along the neckline. I did one for myself. This one says, excuse me, mama. And then we're also going to embroider the girl's names on the sleeve. So my two daughters also happen to be her only two grandchildren. So if you have a grandmother in your family that has multiple grandchildren, you can list all the grandchildren on the sleeve. And that's where things might get complicated because my mother-in-law has 10, 11 uh, grandchildren. <laughs> so her, her names might go all the way up the arm. It'll be fine. But um, this is what we're doing tonight. It's a really fun project. And I was saying in the live before things got very blurry, um, is that when I first saw these beautiful um, inspiration photos of sweaters and sweatshirts with the names on the sleeves, I'm like, oh, that's so nice. I'm pretty sure we, we have to do that on a free arm machine or like a multi-needle machine. And I was like, I wonder if we're going to be able to do this on a flatbed machine because that's what most people have. And I'm glad um, and proud to tell you tonight that we can do this on a flatbed machine. And there are two different uh, methods that you can use to embroider the sleeve of a sweatshirt. So I'm going to switch cameras here and go to my craft table. So let me show you this more up close. So this is a sweatshirt I made for myself. And these are my daughters, Abigail and Elise, and that's on the sleeve. Now, I also have this sweatshirt that we did in September um, where we did the felt applique. So if you didn't see this, this was our September Sip and Stitch Live um, where we did this project from start to finish. So I had the sweatshirt, so I'm like, let me go ahead and play with the sleeve on this one. And so I put a little hoot at in a, in a fleur de lis. So I did each of these sleeves differently. I did this one first, where I took the sweatshirt, put it inside out, and floated it on a four x four hoop and pinned everything out the way. So this is doable depending on the size of the design. Now, if you're doing you know, five or six kids' names, that it's gonna be too hard to do it this way. Like this was just one little piece um, of writing and one symbol. Okay, I could maybe get two on there, but you're gonna be stretching and pinning. That's how that's gonna happen. It is doable. Now for this sweatshirt, I wanted to try a different method. So what I did was I used my seam ripper and I left the cuff alone, didn't mess with the cuff, but I started and I ripped the seam open here and I actually opened it. I probably could have left the hole a lot smaller, like something like this. Um, but what you're doing now is you're making this a lot more accessible to where it can be floated and all this material stays out the way and you don't st stitch your sleeve together on accident. So those are the two different methods. I'm going to show you how you can hoop this way on a different sweater and then we'll hoop it and do it. And then I may still rip the seam open and lay it out flat and when I actually stitch it, it will be hooped like this. So we'll go over both methods and we'll go over the curved neckline. So all the information for this project will be in the description video below. And it's also on my website, carlybell.com. And you'll see at the top menu, they have a sip and stitch homepage. Um, that really has all the info. One of the things I want to point out is you see the cute little heart underneath. This is a free download for you that you can go and grab on the Sip and Stitch homepage or it's in the uh, description below. But it's a link and you go and you just put your name and your email and then it will automatically email you this cute little tiny 
part. I want to say it's like a half inch. Yeah, it's like a half inch by a half inch. It just comes in at one size in multiple formats. And so you could put that under your names if you want to. All right, and then some of the fonts I used, I'll also have linked. This is the Fighter Skinny. The skinny one allows you to make it as small as you need to. Um, but this is a chain stitch, it's really pretty. It looks like um, hand embroidery, but it's a chain stitch. Um, that's from Lenny Penny. This was, I think it's called Evening Stroll from Designs by Juju. And then on my sweatshirt tonight, I'm using a new font from Applique Alley. What was it called? Winter Chai. I really like this. I saw it like on Tuesday or Wednesday this week after I'd already had everything planned. And I'm like, oh no, the next sweatshirt needs to be this font. So I did it for the name and the, the girl's name. So this is my mom. They call her Mimi. And then her two grand girls, grandkids um, on the sleeve is going to be in the same font. So you will need in Brilliance Essentials in order to do this project mainly for the curving of the neckline and you are going to want to print it out so that it's it's going to help it's it's really necessary for placement so that you can figure out exactly where you want to put your design so let me find my mouse and screen's going to look crazy for a second but let's go into in brilliance essentials so here I have the girls' names already done, so let's start a new, a new design. Okay, what do I have here? I have a five by seven hoop. So let's do the, the curved neckline first. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my hoop, and if I double click this, it went from being vertical to horizontal. And I'm gonna go to my lettering tool, and I'm gonna type Mimi, M-E-M-E. -E. The winter chai font only comes in lowercase. So um, if you are particular and want to have uppercase letters, then choose a different font. But I like the look of all the, the lowercase. And let's see, this is, here we go, Applique Alley Winter Chai. I wanna say I did it in um, an inch. No, we did it bigger than that. I'm gonna cheat and look and see what I did. This one, <laughs> this is the one already curved. What size did I do? I did one and a half inches. Okay, let's go back to our new one. And one and a half. All right, so this is the size I'm doing. Um, then you'll see it is a script font, but the letters are not connected. So you wanna select the little green box and that will just let you get one letter. And you can either use the cursors on your keyboard or pick it up and move it like this. But when I do that, sometimes I don't have it aligned right. So I like to use my keyboard so that everything is, it stays online. So I move the E, now I'm gonna go move the M. And this might get adjusted in a minute, but for now I'm gonna do this. Okay, so you wanna connect it so the scripts are connected. Then, you want to put it on a curve. And we've done a previous video on this where I wanna say we added a circle, but here uh, using the library tool. But today I'm gonna to show you what I think is a little bit simpler and that we're just gonna curve the text using the circle feature here. So instead of it being a straight line, we're gonna click circle. In here, we can say, if we don't do anything, it'll place the words on top of the circle so that they curve up. And if we click here, it'll place the curve, uh, place the letters on the bottom of the circle so it curves um, that way. And what I do is I play around with it. There's no exact science to it, at least for me. Um, what I do is I play around with it and you can adjust how much it curves here um, and then I would center it in the hoop like this and I would print it out and I would cut it out and see how it looks on the neckline. And then if it looks like, oh, it needs to be a little bit wider, then I'll do that and I'll print it out again. So that's my method um, for figuring out what kind of curve goes for the particular 
sweater or sweatshirt that I'm working on. So that's it for the curved neckline. And so to print it, you would just go to File and Print, and it will print true to size, and it will have crosshairs in it. So it really helps with placement. So I'll just print this page, and then I'll cut out the letters out of this page, okay? And I've already done that. So um, now let's move on to the sleeve. So I'm gonna do another new, and I'm doing a four by four hoop for the sleeve. So let me change my hoop to 100 by 100, four by four, apply, okay. Go back to my lettering tool and I am, I think I did two lettering designs. Um, so I can do Abigail, A-B-I-G-A-I-L, enter, and then change the font. And I did a half inch for the girls' names. I'm gonna move that up. And then I did another lettering design, lease. And then I merged my little heart. And you could do that in two different ways. You can either go to the merge button here and it will pull up all your files and then you go and find it. And so that is a little bit complicated for me. Let me see. This is stuff I digitized and I don't see. There we go. Mini heart. There we go. So there's my mini heart and you pick whatever format. It doesn't matter what you pick when you're merging it because when you save it, you're going to save the whole thing in the format. So that's clicked and I hit import. There we go. So there's my little mini heart. And I'm just going to move that underneath the name like this. Right? So now I'm going to scroll, I'm going to zoom in because we need to connect these letters. So this one, I'm going to drag and move because they might not all stay. I might move them up and down a little bit. So like this one was down here, I'm gonna move it up a little bit. And you just kind of put it where you think it looks best. So like when you do this, I find there's too much space between the G and the A. So I did this. So that part of the G went there and you can kind of tweak it to where you think it looks good. And you can move that and that. So now we have that and it will stay together now. And I'll just kind of center it. And then we'll do the same thing for Elise. And how did I do this? I think I did the S here. Every curve font is going to be a little different. So the E doesn't look good here, but I did it to where it goes underneath. Uh, it, that, that swirl for the S lines up right here. All right, and then I'm just gonna look at my little black bars. Now something else I can do is I can select all three of these and go to alignment. And I want to align down the center and hit apply. And you see how that adjusted over a little bit? So now it's, um, it's all aligned and centered. Um, if you are going, if you want your machine to stop after it stitches the first name and cut the thread and move to the next one, then you may want to change the color of the second one to anything just so that your machine stops. If you leave these two names the same color, your machine's not going to stop. It's going to stitch one and then jump to the second name and stitch it out. So that's just a little pointer if you have a machine that does not cut jump stitches, like the one I'm working on tonight. Um, I like to change the color so that it will stop and cut and then move on to the next one. But I am going to end up stitching both of these names in white and I'm going to do the heart in a light pink. All right, so you're going to want to save a stitch file onto your USB stick and then plug that into your machine for both your sleeve design and your neckline design. 
you are also going to want to print out this one as well because we are going to want it for placement on the sleeve um, so that it will help you with placement. So print both designs out and then save both of them to your USB stick in whatever format your machine recognizes. Okay, so now let's go back to the craft table. And sorry, my camera doesn't like the colors I put out sometimes. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna gather our supplies. So for both the neckline and the sleeve, we are I'm doing the neckline in my five by seven hoop, the sleeve in my four by four hoop. For both of them, I'm hooping cutaway stabilizer only. I'm hooping just the stabilizer and we're gonna float the sweatshirt onto the hoops. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my hoops ready and let me turn it this way. So just hooping the stabilizer. All right, make sure it's nice and tight. And I am going to draw some placement marks on it. So I'm gonna use the grid that came with the machine here and use my marker and let me get my ruler here we go and so I could draw my crosshairs okay all right so that one's ready now we're gonna do the same thing with my four by four hoop. This is stabilizer. Okay, hooping that. Put my grid in there. drawing the placement marks. Okay, so these are ready. Oh, the camera went out. Oh, I clicked, I clicked something. Okay, sorry about that. Um, all right, so now we have both hoops ready to go, cutaway stabilizer, placement marks drawn, and then we are gonna spray them with temporary spray adhesive. So I'm gonna put these aside for now, and now let's, let's hoop the neck first. So here is the kind of sweater that I'm gonna be um, stitching tonight. And so I'm just gonna lay it nice and flat on my table, try to keep it kind of straight looking. And then I'm gonna take my printout of my design and kind of figure out where I want it. So I kind of have it, they have this thicker seam here. And so you can put it as close as you want. Sometimes I've seen people put it a little bit further away. Um, I think either way looks good. So I would say that's personal preference. I do tend to have the end of the word go close to the shoulder seam. So um, that's the look I like. If you wanna have it a little bit lower, you can do that as well. It's, this is where really personal preference comes in. So I like mine about right here. So I'm gonna take some pins and I'm going to pin it to my sweater. Okay, so that's where it's, that's where I want it to stitch. And so this is gonna really help us figure out placement. So that is that. Um, then if we want, let's stitch this out first and then we'll come back to the sleeve. So now I wanna get my five by seven hoop. I'm gonna spray it with some spray adhesive. And the way we're gonna be hooping it is we're gonna turn the hoop horizontally. It's hooking to the machine here. And we're gonna hoop it, float it like this, right? So let me spray it. Okay. And 
you have some choices here you can try and to have it to where just this part of the you go through the neck hole in a sense right go through the neck hole and float it on there or you can go through the bottom hole like this and float it on there so that is your choice as well I've, I went through the bottom hole for the, the last one so I'm gonna do it that way again because I know that worked well for me and basically what I want to do is these crosshairs that are on my printout see it's kind of odd because there's the center and there's the sides um, because it's on a curve so that is where I want my design to go. So I'm going to try to get the center there and I see that line there and I see that blue line and this line. So play around with it, see if it is where you want it to be. Once you have it where you want, you really want to make sure it's all smoothed out, as smooth as you can get it. You have that spray stabilizer on there, so that should really help keep it in place. But that spray adhesive is not enough to really secure it, so I do recommend that you also pin your sweater or sweatshirt to the stabilizer as well outside of the embroidery area of where you're stitching to really help secure the sweater to the hoop and the stabilizer since we're just floating it. Okay, so I'm going to just put four pins on all four sides, and so that is, that is on there. That's not moving. Okay, now we want to go over to the machine, load it onto the machine, and make sure the design is really going to fall where we want it to. So let's go over to the machine now. I have my USB stick plugged in, so I'm going to hit USB, and I have my two designs, so I'm going to do my, mom, my Mimi one first. And hit set. Now this is something to look at. I don't know if you can tell but do you see the direction Mimi's going? It's going this way to this way and when I load it onto the machine the direction is the opposite. It's going this way to this way. So I do want to rotate it so that it matches how it looks on my printout. So now it's going the direction I want. I know it's hard for you to see because it's too like white, but um, just make sure when your sweater and your hoop is on the machine, the design matches the direction of your printout. All right, so we're gonna, we got all this material to go through under the presser foot here. So when you go through the neck hole, then you don't have to deal with this, but it's not that bad if you do it right okay so oops all right so the and now I'm hooking the hoop onto the two little pegs click that on there and now I can open all of this up nicely smooth this back out and you really want to make sure nothing from the sweatshirt is getting underneath the hoop and accidentally stitching to itself and you also want to make sure all this excess material doesn't get underneath the needle on accident. All right so now I'm going to hit OK. We rotated it. I'm going to hit end edit. Now I'm looking to see does my needle line up where this crosshair is and I can see that it doesn't. So I can move, oops, what did I press? Back. Okay. I can move the design 
I'm just trying to look to see. So I'm going to move it a little bit. And then what I can do is hit needle down. And I can see really where it is. And it's, it needs to go up a little bit more. There we go. Spot on. So now my needle is right over my crosshairs. Once you get this all right where you want it, now you can remove your paper placement guide and your pins that are holding the paper in place. And now I would cover this area, depending on the material you're using, but if it's any kind of sweatshirt or sweater, I would use a water soluble topping um, to prevent the threads from sinking down into the fabric. So I'm going to cut a piece of this. I had scissors. They always disappear. <laughs> okay. All right, so I just cut a piece of topping and I'm placing it all. And if you want to have this set up before you remove your paper so you can see like right where to put your topping, you can do that. Now I'm going to hit embroidery. So it is all ready to go. It's one step. I'm doing it in white. I already have my white thread loaded. Now because we're working with such a bulky thing, one extra tip that you can do to make sure things don't get moved, and because when it moves, you know, your sweatshirt can get in the way. What you could do is go to the needle plus minus button and click just plus one. That is where my first stitch is going to be. So now I don't have any unexpected fabric moving. This is where my first stitch is going to be. Everything looks good. So I am going to hit okay, lower the presser foot and start stitching. And this stitch out takes about 11 minutes. So we're just gonna let that stitch. And what did I do? I think I, I slowed my machine down because I I, the last thing I did was the sleeve. I think we could speed it up for the neckline. So I'm gonna do that. So let me pause for a second. I'm gonna go to my settings and I have it on 350 right now. And this, can, this machine could go as fast as 650. So I'm going to do OK, and it can pick up right where it left off. And now it's going to stitch a little bit faster. Now it's going to stitch out in eight minutes. So you can see how it's moving a little faster. And you just want to make sure that you are keeping no material is getting in the way. And you can use something like a stiletto to move or hold anything like those topper or something or to make sure this doesn't get um, where you don't want it to go. And um, and that's it. And we're just gonna let that stitch out. And then as soon as it's done, then we'll do the sleeve. I'm watching it. It's actually working on like the opposite side of the M. It still has to come all the way over here. So hopefully I put my topper. Um, So I like this one. It's a it's a, a little bit. It's a satin stitch. Um, it's not a super thick one. So I like that it's kind of a medium weight, and it's. Uh, I love the script. So it's like you know a thinner satin script. So I think it works really nice for this neckline embroidery. But also the chain stitch looks nice as well. So whatever. Um, you think looks nice. You can use any um, embroidery font that you have um, to stitch this out. So you see I have some jump stitches going on so I'm just going to trim all of those when it's done. So that's one of the things about the PE800 is that it does not cut jump stitches so we will have to trim those when it's done.
then I'm just keeping this. Sorry if y'all can't see good. Keeping all this. There we go. So now it's stitching the next letter. And something you can do if all these jump stitches bother you is you can pause your machine and grab your scissors and trim those jump stitches before it moves on. So that is something you can do. Like every time you see a jump stitch, let it go a little bit and then pause your machine and jump it. So depending on the project, I do that sometimes because I don't want to have a bunch of jump stitches underneath the maybe uh, embroidery design or pattern that it's doing. So that's something that you can think about as well. Here is the E. And there was something I think I did on my last design and I forgot to do it for this one was you can remove the overlapping stitching because you saw how we put those um, letters together. There is a way in Embrilliance that you can remove those overlapping stitching um, so that you're not stitching you know, on a dense part over again. All right, so I'm just making sure all this stays out of the way. And have this going. Let me see if I can reduce the light. I wonder if I can reduce the light on my camera while it's recording. No, I don't think I can. Oh wait, maybe it will. Make sure everything's out of the way. Okay, oh here we go. No. Nope. Things are like a little bit too white. Let me try turning off this light over here and see if that makes a difference. All right, oh, it's still white. <laughs> So we have a jump stitch here, and it's going to do that. I think I'm going to pause it and cut this jump stitch because it's going to come back and stitch on top of it. There we go. Now, some things I could tell you about. So tonight's live didn't work out because my internet is not good. I'm going to try to figure it out so that... Um, my internet will be better next week. I think everything should work out to where we're going to be home the night, the Friday after Thanksgiving, um, Black Friday. I don't know if we're going to go do any shop. We're going to Lafayette on Thanksgiving, but I think we're coming home Thursday night, unless by some miracle my husband gets off of work on Friday. So that's where things are kind of like up in the air. But I think everything should work out to where we will be home the Friday night after Thanksgiving. And if so, I, I wanted to do kind of a Black Friday show. Um, I'm, first of all, you know, first thing that morning, I'm gonna find all the of my favorite embroidery um, digitizers that have sales going on. And then I'm sure Amazon um, is gonna have some good sales. And I know Sewing Machine Plus is gonna have some good sales, but their sales might be saved for Cyber Monday. I have to check. Um, and I got a bunch of new things in the craft room I want to show you. Um, I got my Bella box for the fall. It's, um, what is it called? Season of Gifting, I think. Um, I wanted to unbox that with y'all because I've been dying to open it, but I was like, I need to, I need to video opening it. Um, I'm also getting the, so the collectible Christmas for this year because it just we just finished all of the um what was it the holiday village for last year's collectible christmas we finished it in october so november we needed a new project and the new project is a tree skirt and when i tell you it is gorgeous it is so so pretty um, i cannot wait to make this tree skirt and so the way it works is every month we'll get like this wedge of fabric that's already pre-quilted and we'll get a design each month to stitch on that wedge and to also make an ornament that matches the design for that wedge. 
So by next October, we'll have a full tree skirt made and 12 beautiful embroidered Christmas ornaments. So my tree is gonna look fabulous next year. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to show y'all that. I should have that in the mail by next week. And then I got a new embroidery machine. Um, and it's a new one and I'm gonna show you right now because I think I could pan my my camera over so let's see if this is gonna work look at that this is the new skitch 4x4 machine I just opened it today I'm gonna do an unboxing video but it's so cool it's so so cool and then this I still need to unbox this is the new brother sublimation printer so both of those are gonna be opening up soon and playing with those. I'm very excited about it. Let me fix my camera back. Oh wait, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. All right, oops, okay. All right, so that is done stitching. So we can take this off the machine now and go clean it up and then we can hoop and stitch our sleeve. Okay, so there you can see. Mimi, there it is. So let's go clean that up on the craft table. All right. So here is our Mimi. And I love that, my girls. So when Abigail was born, we have lots of grandparents because I got my parents divorced when I was little so they have two sets of grandparents from me and then they have my husband's um, parents as well so we got three sets of grandparents and it was this whole thing it was really funny about what the grandparents wanted to be called when Abigail came and my mom wanted to be called Grammy I was like, that's what I, I don't want to be called grandma. I don't want to be called mama. I want to be called Grammy. That's what she wanted her name to be. So she tried to teach Abigail that name, but Abigail did not call her that name. She ended up calling her Mimi and that's what stuck. So that is her name. <laughs> so I think that's funny. She got, Abigail picked her name. She didn't get to pick her name. <laughs> so this is it. So we're going to pull all the pins out, pull the water soluble stabilizer out. You can spray this with some, um, some water to get the residual uh, topper off of there. I could like, it's still in the E and stuff. So I'm gonna clean that up later. But what I am gonna do is remove it from the hoop. So undo the hoop like this and Kind of pull it see how it was um that's that uh, spray adhesive was kind of keeping it but now we're going to trim this all around the stabilizer here and you do want to be careful when you're trimming that you don't accidentally nick your shirt or your sweater and make a hole in it because I think we've all done that before now. If you've been embroidering or you're just starting out, it's kind of a rite of passage. I think at some point we put a hole in our shirt or we stitch our shirt to itself. So pay attention and don't do that. All right. Okay. So that is trimmed. I could trim it up a little better. I can trim this, but for now we're going to move on. So this, let's see what our neckline looks like. All said and done. I love it. Mimi. There she is. Okay. So there's her neckline. And now let's move on to the sleeve. So what I did on my other sweatshirts is the side I did the neckline was the side I did the sleeve. Again, personal preference, whatever works for you. It's easy for me to figure out the center because I have this nice fold. So what you want to do is you want to pull this to where the seam is right down the center of the back and your fold line, if you have one, or you can press it if you don't have one, 
your fold line is going right on top of that back center seam. So then I know I'm looking right where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna fold that in place. Then I'm going to grab my um, printout that I have somewhere, here it is, of my design. So this is the design we made in In Brilliance and just print it out and you see it has the crosshairs. So that is gonna help you with placement. Now, as far as where to put it on the sleeve, I was kind of doing it like two finger, two fingers from the cuff, um, but whatever you think looks good. And then I'm using that fold line and seam to center it this way. Okay, so depending on the shirt. Now also something that helps me because it's, you moving around a lot to get it pinned. I went ahead and sprayed some spray adhesive on the back of my paper so that once I figure out where I want it, my paper is staying because when I was going to pin it, the paper was like moving all over the place. So spraying it a little bit helps me with it staying where I want it to be while I'm pinning it because that was becoming a little bit of a aggravation when I was doing my other sweaters um, earlier this week. Okay, so that is pinned in place. So we're gonna show the two methods. The first method is where you don't do anything but float it. Um, and this is if you don't have a sewing machine and you don't have the option to open the hole and sew it back up, this is the method you're gonna wanna do. This is gonna limit you on how much you can put and how big your design can be because you really have a small opening. But what you wanna do is turn your sleeve a bit inside out. Okay, you wanna spray this so that it, it sticks. Okay, you wanna turn the whole sleeve inside out, right? Oops, I saw a pin. Ooh, okay. Lauren, remind me to find that pin. <laughs> My sister is in the room with me. So she could remind me because I'm going to forget and somebody's toe is going to get a pin in it and it won't be good. All right. Okay, so I'm turning my sleeve inside out, right, inside out. But I still got my design in there. So what you want to do is open it so that you can get kind of your, your two fingers and your thumb around this and you can place it on your hoop. Now, if you don't get it just right, it's okay. You're gonna be able to move your needle. You are going to want to get it straight across though so that it doesn't stitch crooked. I can always move my needle around if it's too high or too low. But the main thing is you just wanna get it to where it's straight across, okay? So once you have it, that doesn't look straight. There we go. That line, that line, okay. All right, as long as I have it somewhat where I think it's straight. Now you want to right above and right below and on the sides, you want to pin your sweatshirt to the hoop just like we did the neckline. Now, I never said it was easy to do it this way, but I just want you to know it is possible because I did it for my, the Houdat sweatshirt. But again, that design was small. Okay, so I have it there. I'm also gonna pin it on the sides here because we're really gonna stretch this hole open and I don't want to pull my sweater away from where it really is supposed to be stitching. So you can pin this as much as you want to to really make sure 
that little square where your design is going is going to stay nice and flat onto the stabilizer. Now, what we can do is take this and really pull it and pin it out of place. So like I could take this and just pin the sweater to, what I was doing was I was pinning it to itself and through like this bit of stabilizer up here outside the hoop, I was pinning it right here. So that it stays out the way. So we could do that over here too. I think that's what I did for my my Saint sweatshirt. Okay, and then when you're trying to do all this carefully, you're going to pin. Like I think I got this one pulled too much. Let's pin it here. You're going to be able to play around with it and feel what's what's going to work best. Because every shirt is going to be different with how big the armhole is going to be. So if you do have a sewing machine, you're going to like the other option a lot better. But you're going to pin this out of the way. And every shirt's going to be different with how much give ow, the sleeve gives you. Because I think my other sweatshirts, the sleeve holes, gave me more, more give. And when you're doing this, you want to be careful you don't actually pop your stabilizer out of the hoop. So this is just a game of pinning and trying to get a decent little hole open in. Now, you're not probably gonna get it to where you got the whole thing secure and everything's gonna be out the way all the time. You're still gonna have to get in there with your stiletto and move things around because your presser foot, even if your needle's hitting here, your presser foot is you know big depending on your machine and might be hitting all over on the side. So um, it all depends on the machine but you want to get it at least open a little bit here and then we can move things around like when it gets to the heart then we'll hold our stiletto here and make sure that that all stays so I would say this is good for now and we would put this on the machine load the second design There we go, set. All right, so there's my design. And put all your extra sweatshirt over there out the way. Get all of this bulk under the presser foot and hold in place. Okay, so I want to see that my needle is a little bit off, so I'm gonna move my design there, needle, okay, that's right on. Okay, so once you have that right where you want it, okay, let me trim that, because that's gonna leave a tail. Okay, have that where you want it. Now you can go and remove your paper, okay? and get your pins that are just holding your paper in place. I think I moved more. I think I removed one I didn't want to remove. Oops. Okay, I got my paper. Remember I used spray adhesive, so it, it didn't want to move. Okay, so spray adhesive helped with pinning it, but it doesn't help with removing it <laughs> once you have it where you want it. Okay, make sure it's all nice and smooth. 
Then you want to go put your water soluble topper in there. And I'm going to use my stiletto to get it all underneath the material and tucked in. So, y'all can see how much of a pain in the butt this way is, right? So, from here, we would stitch the design and really keep a very close eye on it using our stiletto to keep everything out of place. You would also want to slow your machine down to its slowest setting so that it's taking its time and nothing's moving around. And then use the trick of once you have it ready, going to the needle plus minus button and just hit plus one. So now that's where my first stitch is gonna be so I can make sure everything's out the way, okay? So now that y'all see how I've hooped it, how I would stitch it, set everything up, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and open up the seam and show you how much easier it is when you open up the seam. But this is doable, it's just very tedious in that you have to watch your machine and really make sure that everything stays out of place while it's stitching, okay? So that's method number one. So I just wanted to show you how that was done and then now you'll be able to see how much easier it is when we open up the seam. So let's go back to the craft table. I'm gonna take all these crazy pins out. Okay, we're still gonna need some pins for my other method, but not nearly as many. Okay, now you're gonna get your handy dandy seam ripper. And while it's inside out like this, so I, I don't do anything to the sleeve. What I was doing was ripping it like right, right past the cuff. So I can barely see the little stitches. And then once you get a kind of hole, then it makes it a little bit easier. And this sweater is a little bit different material than the other one I did. It's a little bit trickier. But yeah, once I get it, then I can see all of these and I can see I'm cutting the thread and not the the, the sweater itself. So, and then like if you have a serger or what was it? Uh, um, somebody recommended during the sip and stitch ca cast over stitch. I forget what it was called. On your sewing machine, you might be able to do some other options to keep the raw edge maybe from fraying so much. So I do have a serger, but I don't, I think I only have white thread for it. So what I might do is stitch the, um, the straight line in a, in a matching blue thread and then still do the serger in, in white after just to cover up that raw edge. So just keep going and work your way until you think you have a hole that is um, big enough for you to lay out your sleeve onto the hoop a little bit easier.
what I did when I was done with my other one is I took my um my what do you call it the lint roller and I rubbed I rubbed the lint roller up and down on it and it caught all these these crazy threads that was happening from the seam ripper so I think that's good so now we can turn it no I still want to keep it this way right and now we will be able to hoop it like this and our life is so much easier right that is much easier to leave open and stitch so I did remove my placement so I got to do my placement again so let me do that and I probably got to respray re that because it's not really sticky anymore <laughs> okay so let me get my sleeve where I want it and get my only this one's on the big ones are not on <laughs> I'm talking to my sister okay so then you know figure out where I want this and now it's easier for me to pin this because I can I can do this I'm not trying to go through the whole of the sleeve again okay all right so that is where i want it now i'm gonna turn it inside out like that spray that again and float that again I just want to try to get it straight across is my goal right there there we go it's okay if it's to the right or the left a little because we're going to use the needle to um, get right on that mark where we want it okay I am still going to pin my sweater to the stabilizer so that it's more secure to the hoop and it's not just relying on the spray adhesive I think just the top and bottom is good in this case okay and that's it so we're gonna go through the same method we're gonna go put it on the machine make sure it lines up where we want it and then we, we're gonna put the water soluble topper so let's do that switch cameras here we go So I'm going to go back to the home screen and start over. There we go. Moves to center. Pick my name. Pick set. Pick end edit. Let me drop my needle. Okay, to see I need to move over a few notches this way. And put the needle down. A few more notches. needle right where I want it on the money okay every time I do that I'm making this longer so I'm gonna cut it okay now I know I got my needle set up right where I want it to be I can move my paper off now again my papers maybe don't stick it so much um, when you're doing your placement, making sure everything's nice and smooth. And I'm gonna put my water soluble topper down. And you can pin or tape this into place too if you want to. Okay, now I'm gonna do the needle plus minus and do plus one. All right, that's showing me right where the design is going to start. I think everything looks good. I'm going to slow my machine down. Let me go to the settings and go down to three. Oh, 50. Okay. 
So that just makes me feel better that things are moving slowly because I'm working in such a small area. Also, I find with small lettering, slowing down your machine um, helps it come out a little bit better. There's other tips with super small lettering where you can um, use a 60 weight thread, 60 weight bobbin, and change your needle to a 65 nine. Um, are some other things you could do for very small lettering. Half inch is not super small. I would I would consider those things when I'd go down to like a quarter inch um, uh, lettering size. That's when I would consider maybe changing the needle, changing the thread weight. Um, but I'm stitching both the names in white, and then I'm gonna change to pink and stitch the little heart. Thank you so much. All right, okay. Tell my girls to behave. <laughs> All right, my sister was here visiting while I was on the show. Hey, Lisa. Um, and her friend was playing with Elise so that she was good while I'm videoing this. All right, so this is stitching. This is going to take 11 minutes to stitch my design. Hi, Lisa. Um, I wait a little while. The camera's on the machine right now. When the camera's on, on the front, then you can say hi. I'll tell you. My girl's being so good. They were, um, they were really good. So I just did my Sip and Stitch holiday workshop. Um, it was like every day last weekend, including Saturday. So, of course, they were home on Saturday, and I had two classes to teach on Saturday. And it was killing Elise not to come in hand, like, just take over the whole camera situation. <laughs> she just wanted to talk to everybody and tell them hi. And she was good. She came and helped me a little bit. But um, for those of y'all that joined me for my holiday workshop, thank y'all so much. I hope y'all had as much fun as I did. We made all kinds of pretty stuff all kinds of pretty stuff. It got me very much in the holiday spirit. So ready to, to make Christmas presents um, for everyone. Lots of cute gifts, ideas for like, I got, I know what I'm gonna make my teachers, my girls' teachers, and, um, and a few other like kid, like little keychains for the kids to give to their friends. Um, I got ornaments. Look at this ornament. I'm in love with it. Um, I'm making this for all the family members. So this we made for the holiday workshop. So look, um, the design was is the wreath frame, right? And then we used Embrilliance to go and personalize it, and just use whatever fonts you have on your computer. I actually these are fonts that came with Embrilliance. Um, so I did Abigail and Elise is my two girls, and this is our dog, and this is our cat. And I put a B for our last name and then the year. So I think I'm going to do something like this for all my family members um, this year. I think it's going to be cute. And then for the sweater. So I wanted to talk to you about some other ways that you can personalize these sweaters. So right now we're doing moms and grandmas with kids and grandkids names on the sleeves. Now, for uh, people that don't have children... I thought, and like Abigail's gonna love this, we're, we're gonna do a pet sweater for her. What I'm gonna do, instead of doing neckline embroidery, I found this really cute little tiny filled stitch design of a Yorkie and of a cat. And so I'm gonna stitch those like on the upper left chest. Um, and then on the sleeve, right, Ozzy and Owen and like a little paw print underneath it. So for your friends that have fur babies, you can do something like that. You can go on Etsy or just Google a filled stitch pet design of whatever kind of dog or animal that they have and do that as like an upper left chest um, and then do the pet's names on the sleeve with like a little tiny paw print. So I thought that would be cute for Abigail. I even got her, I picked up a pair of sweatpants too and I was thinking I could put the little Yorkie and cat embroidery like where the kind of where the pocket is on the uh, the top of the pants, like somewhere around there too, to make her like a, a matching set of a sweatshirt and sweatpants. So I thought that would be cute. So lots of things that we can do with this. I've also seen um, shirts like the, the sweatshirt itself would say, "I wear my heart on my sleeve," 
and then put the names of you know whoever's special to them on the sleeves. Um, if you don't, if you want to do something different than the curved line neck embroidery, you can do big applique letters of Mama, M A M A, across the whole chest. Um, if you have a larger machine, but even if you have this machine, you can do it because you can use the um, five by twelve multi positionable hoop, and I have a um, tutorial on that. We actually just did it for the Sip and Stitch workshop. We did the uh, Mary applique. But I have one from last year where we made an LSU applique shirt. So same method, but you're just going to, you know, in Imbrilliance, type out Mama, and then you'll split it, the same method. Um, and you can fill that applique with whatever material you have. And something I saw that was really precious was people were taking the onesies, some onesies from their kids when they were babies. So like in my case, you know, my kids are, are um, 11 and 7 now. If I went and found some of their onesies from when they were babies, I could fill the applique of the mama with some of their baby onesies. Like how precious is that? And how like sentimental that the, even the fabric um, you're using is from when they were a baby. So all kinds of cute stuff that we can do. And all of these make really great gifts. So um, you can personalize them and customize them however you want. Now you know how to curve the font and in brilliance. Um, type out whatever you want, use whatever fonts you want, you know how to place it, and now you know how to stitch on the sleeve, no matter if you open the arm or not. Just keep in mind, when you don't open the arm, um, your your space is, is smaller. Okay, so now we're going to stitch Elise. I'm going to keep that in white. But you see, this is why I changed the color and in brilliance, so when Abigail was done stitching, it cut. And so that's one less jump stitch I have to deal with. But it could, I could have kept them both and it just went stitch into the next one. And then when Elise is done, I'll change the thread to this pink color and do the heart in pink. So. But let me know in the comments um, if y'all have any questions about tonight since we couldn't do it live and I can't read your questions like I normally do. Um, you can always comment in the bottom of the video. Um, and I will see, we're supposed to possibly go to LSU tomorrow, um, to go like visit and tailgate before the football game tomorrow night. I don't know if that's happening or not. If it doesn't happen and I end up just being home, maybe around lunchtime I'll go live and, um, and if anybody's around, you know, y'all can ask me questions about tonight, but I do need to get my internet sorted out. Um, I might just go buy a really long Ethernet cable and run it up the stairs <laughs> while I'm filming um, to really make sure that the internet is good. I think that's probably the best solution um, so that this doesn't happen again because I was so looking forward to tonight's live and I, it seems like a lot of y'all were very excited about it. So I hope the quality of this video is good and y'all could really see everything I'm doing and hear me clearly and all that good stuff. So definitely let me know in the comments, um, you know, if you enjoyed tonight's tutorial and if it's the quality is a lot better than um, the live that I tried to shoot earlier tonight. Oh, you know what I have not been doing? I have not been sipping this whole time. I was so stressed about the internet, I forgot to take a sip. this make sure I stitch I love my little stiletto I love that I can go in here and just like because I, I, I constantly feel the need to touch it even though it's fine like you're looking at it right now the needle and presser foot is not anywhere close to any of the rest of the fabric like it's fine but I have this urge to like constantly like adjust and feel and adjust <laughs> maybe it's just me if you're like me get a stiletto because you don't want to be putting your finger in there no fingers near the needle so you can see like how much slower my machine is going um, I just like taking my time on the sleeves I don't want any um, surprises of things moving too fast and me not being able to get in there and adjust the fabric quickly enough so if you can slow your machine down I, I do recommend you do that Right. 
almost done. I can't tell, did it do the eye? I think it did the eye. Okay, so now the last thing is the heart. So I'm gonna cut my white thread. I'm gonna raise the press of foot. And I lost my thread when I did that, there we go. I pull that out. And I guess you can't see, but I always like to use a thread stand um, when I'm using my flatbed machine. It, um, I find the, the thread feeds off the spool a lot better than when I use it here. So that's why you see my, my thread coming in off the side. So I'm gonna lower my presser foot, thread my needle, Make sure it's pulled through all the way and everything's out the way and now we're going to stitch the last heart and then we're done let's see i can't tell how long i've been filming but on my watch it's 8 35 so it's just a little bit longer than an hour so that's not bad at all some like um it's called like a type of texture to fill the heart with so the fill stitch of the heart looks kind of like it has some some waves in it to have a little fun with it but you can go and grab this little heart download for free um it'll be the link will be below this video and also you can get it on my website carlybell.com and go to the top menu where it says sip and stitch home page that's going to tell you all the links um, for tonight's supplies, fonts, and have the, the download for the heart. Okay, so this is done. Okay. Let me pull this. So here we go. This is what we have. And there's my craft table. Okay. So here we are done. So now I can, one thing you can do before you rip the water soluble topper off of it, I like to cut my jump stitches because I have this layer now to where I don't accidentally snag my sweater because I have my topper. So those, those jump stitches are right on top the topper. So I find it makes, grabbing the jump stitches and not the material a little bit easier when you have it. Except this one, I got the topper thing up. Okay. And having tweezers really helps too because I can this one didn't curl all the way. I could really grab it and pull it up and cut it. Just cutting all these little jump stitches. Look, okay, here's one between the the dot of the eye. Oh, there's some eyes up here. I'm always tempted to leave these little jump stitches, like especially like the dot of the eye, but it does look better. Once I take them off, I'm like, yeah, I need to take that off. It looks better. Okay, all the jump stitches are gone, and now I'm just gonna pull the water soluble topper up. 
and remove my pins. And I can unhoop and do the same thing we did with the neckline and trim the stabilizer around. Now, most of the time for children's clothing, I do put a, a backing, like a fusible interfacing on top of this to prevent the thread from um, rubbing against the kid's skin. Um, when I make things for myself, I don't do that, but that is an option for you. The kind I use is called Fuse So Soft from the Stay Perfect brand. And um, it's really soft and it's fusible on one side so that you would just iron that right on top the back. And so it gives you a nice soft layer on top. So that's an option for you. Um, like I might end up doing that when I make Abigail's pet sweater. But now I would, well, I would leave it inside out, right? And go to my sewing machine, which I'll probably wait and do till tomorrow. I'll sew up both of mine because I got mine. I left it open so I could show y'all. But um, I will go and just follow the old stitch line. I can see like right where it is pretty much and sew this right back closed and if you have a serger or a different type of stitch on your machine you can do a, um, do something to try and close up the the raw edge on it but I, it's not really that bad at all just do a straight stitch it'll be fine but there is my mom's sweater her grandma sweater her mimi sweater she came with me today we had fall fest at abigail's school and me and my mom went and volunteered it was a lot of fun and everybody thought she was my sister because she looks very young and i hope that i look like her when i am her age <laughs> so okay so that is it so this is her her neckline for her her grandma name mimi and then her two granddaughters abigail and elise is on the sleeve and i had we got a little bit of water soluble topper still on there so that's when you could take like a water spray bottle and clean that up and that will all dissolve and then I just use a towel and um and kind of wipe it and it goes away so that's it guys all right let me go get Elise I told her she could come say hi I can move this camera now Elise! Elise! Lisey! Uh, you could come say hi now. You could come say hi. Okay, wait, let me change the camera. And, okay. Uh, hi. Okay, so you see up there that camera? Say hi. Hi. All right, you want to see what I made, Mimi? Yeah. Okay, we made her a sweater and it says Mimi on the neck and then it says Abigail and Elise on the sleeve. You what think about Lauren and you? Lauren, you and Lee. Oh, I could have put Lauren and Lee. So I have, um, that's a good idea. So my mom has three kids, me and my little brother Lee and my little sister Lauren. And then she has her two grandkids, Abigail and Elise. Elise was saying I could put Carly, Lee and Lauren on this sleeve so that one sleeve would be her kids and one sleeve would be her grandkids. So that's a great idea, Elise. Good job. So you think she's gonna like this? Yeah. We're gonna give this part of her Christmas present? Yeah. Yes, yes. So that is it for tonight, guys. How to embroider a neckline and a sleeve on a flatbed machine. Mommy, um, I wanna show them. I should, I sh okay, you wanna show them mine? Yeah. Okay, so this is my sweater. And on this side, Mommy's gonna put Ozzy and Owen. Oh, okay. So on one sleeve, I got Abigail and Elise. And on this sleeve, I'm going to put Ozzy and Owen. Our pets. Our pets. I was thinking about making another... And goldfish. We don't have any goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. know. It just came up. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I hope <laughs> y'all enjoyed this project. Hey, hey, hey. Don't act crazy. Oh, I can move it. <laughs> don't know. You're going to press something on accident. Ah. Okay. 
So I hope you enjoyed tonight's project. Again, Mama, I apologize. Mama, can you see my face? Okay, okay she Mama, needs to get on the stool. Mama, this is a YouTube video. It is, but it's mommy's recording it because subscribe. Right. Yes. And like. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Yeah. Um, apologize again for my internet being bad and us having to cancel the live and do this as a recording. Apologize. <laughs> but hopefully the quality is a lot better and y'all are able to see all the steps of the tutorial without it being blurry and y'all can hear me clearly. Right? Right. We got to fix the internet. You gonna help me fix it? We gotta it? fix my face. Your, what is wrong with your face? <laughs> I do weird faces. <laughs> your face is a beautiful. Yeah, show him your cross eyes. Chris freaks out because he could cross her eyes so well and he can't cross his eyes at all. He's like this. <laughs> He's like trying to cross his eyes and he can't. And she crosses her eyes really well. Okay, yeah. say bye. Say good night. It's late. Good night. Good night. Mom, tell them the time. The time? The time is. 8.45 p.m. Tell them the time without looking at your watch. Well, I know it now. Okay, 8.45 p.m. So we got this done. Okay, pretend you didn't know that. Okay, we got this project done in a little okay, bit. Okay, what's the time? More than an hour. 8.45. You didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it on my computer, too. <laughs> these uh, devices okay. these days. Okay. Hey, say goodnight. Goodnight. Mama, can they do the comments? No, it's not working right now, but we're going to go put it on YouTube for them right now so they can watch it and then put comments, and I'll tell you what they say later. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, the, if you like to sew, put a happy face in the comments. Okay, if you like to sew, put a happy face in the comments. Yeah. Per Elise. <laughs> so, all right. I like happy faces. Good night. And it has to be an emoji. Oh, an emoji. Okay, it has to be an emoji. All right. Good night, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Mom. And hopefully, Mommy, stay tuned. If I bet everyone's going to do a smiley face. I bet so. Um, please subscribe to my email newsletter because that is where I'm going to tell you if, if we're going to have a live um, next Friday. I'm going to send out an email and saying, hey, we're going to have a Friday live. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye.